So this is jobs and unemployment in the new uh, QEMU economy. Uh, I'm John Snow. I'm a software engineer with Red Hat. I work for the uh, block layer and the virtualization team in uh, Westford, if it matters to you. But yeah, let's go for it. Um, so I would like to acknowledge some of the people who have been helping uh, me with this for a while. So we've got Jeff Cody, who is the block jobs maintainer, who is hiding in the back somewhere. Glad that he's not doing this talk today. Uh, Marcus Ambrister, who has uh, been reworking the uh, QAPI upstream for the last year or more. Um, and uh, Eric, who has been uh, doing the other half of that work. Um, they've been giving me lots of reviews and feedback. Uh, Kevin and Max, the uh, block layer maintainers, <laughs> who uh, tell me when I'm having a bad idea. You know. And uh, uh, Alberto Garcia, who did uh, actually some of the preliminary work while I was uh, busy off doing other things. So, just, you know, some of the things that I had planned uh, to do and talk about, well, he already got to them. So, <laughs> uh, so for an overview, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, the state of the uh, jobs layer uh, as it is right now. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the lifetime and management of a jobs object, uh, how that's. Uh, managed and uh, manipulated through the user interface. I'm going to talk about some of the shortcomings and some of the problems that we want to address with the current job system and uh, where we would like to go uh, with that job system in the future. And uh, at the end, uh, I would like to solicit uh, requests and feedback from some of the uh, uh, upper layer maintainers that are here. Uh, so they have a chance to uh, get their foot in the door before we commit to an API they don't like. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> so uh, here's jobs as they exist uh, in, in 2.7 right now, uh, which is not just out yet. But uh, So a job is a uh, long-running uh, chemu task, more or less. Uh, they exist with uh, their user-visible uh, persistent object. So it's not just an in-memory object that developers care about. It's something that the upper management layers ca care about as well. Um, they're user-manipulable, by which I mean you know, libvert as a user. Um, you can pause, resume, cancel, change options, et cetera. Um, these objects are all created via uh, the QMP interface, which, if you're not familiar, is the, the plain text JSON interface for, for manipulating uh, QEMU. Um, and they, you, they're all manipulated and queried via this QMP interface. Um, they are inherently asynchronous. Uh, they can complete or fail asynchronously. They do not block uh, the, uh, the, the command protocol. They uh, you can issue as many as you would like up to a certain point. Uh, there's restrictions on that, which I'll get to later. Um, you do not need to poll or busy wait on them. They will notify you when they are done or have failed. Um, they are usually self-terminating, which I will get to later. But in most cases, once the task is finished, the job will handle cleaning itself up and uh, finishing what it needs to. Um, the jobs that we have today, uh, they're used for either tasks that will take an absurdly long time, so we can't busy wait before we tell you if we've uh, succeeded or failed, um, or tasks that have uh, we don't know in advance how long they will take. Uh, so this is particularly well suited at the moment for storage tasks, because we never have any idea what to accept from the, the speed of that layer. And uh, just in general, it's usually uh, large volumes of uh, uh, operations we need to do. So uh, tasks are well suited, or jobs are well suited for that kind of a task. Good. Um, so these are the jobs we have right now. I'm going to try to go through them quickly, because Kashyap has already covered them yesterday. And Max is going to cover the uh, backup and uh, mirroring in a greater detail later. Oh, well. <laughs> But I'll go through quickly just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about when we talk about jobs uh, in QEMU. Um, there, there's four core types. Um, they have some of them multiple interfaces, and some of them have multiple uh, subtasks they can accomplish uh, based on the parameters you give them. But at the heart of QEMU, they're implemented in four types, and we only expose four types through the QAPI uh, schema. So, 
uh, to start with. There's a block commit, which uh, effectively uh, will combine multiple layers of a backing chain, which if you're not familiar with, well, there's other talks about that. But uh, you can merge multiple layers of a multi-layered image, uh, but the changes are written down towards the base instead of up towards the active layer. Um, this asynchronously happens during uh, reads, writes, etc. Um, Eric Blake gave a really good talk on this uh, last year and great and excruciating detail. Uh, Kashyap uh, went over uh, some of this yesterday, I believe. Um, so if you were interested in knowing more details than what I'm about to cover, you can find that info. Um, but it's basically something like this, where you have an active layer, maybe some intermediate layers, and a base. And uh, commit is going to take uh, an arbitrary number of the, the top layers, and you can uh, squish it down into a, a top layer to save on some of the space and rewrites and such uh, while the VM is running. Um, after the commit is finished, the top layers are uh, no longer uh, needed. Uh, you know, it, they are not deleted automatically for you, but you can. Um, uh, they can be safely removed. Um, block stream, uh, it's the exact opposite, or not quite the exact opposite, but close enough. Uh, where it, uh, it also combines layers of an image, but they're written up towards the active layer instead of down towards the base. Um, this also happens as asynchronously while the VM is running. And again, uh, the same talks if you want more detailed information about usage requirements and so on. <laughs> um, so similar kind of deal, just going the other direction. We're going to pull changes up towards the top, and then afterwards you don't need the backing files anymore. Uh, can increase uh, performance and things like that, uh, so you don't have to go quite as far down the chain and save on storage space, et cetera. Uh, block mirror uh, is a copy operation, essentially. It has uh, multiple uh, modes, uh, full, top, and none. Uh, full is what you'd expect. You make a complete mirror of the device as it's seen. Top is a mirror of just the top portion. Or a none uh, will just mirror new writes. Uh, mirror works in two phases. Uh, there's a pre-synchronized phase and a post-synchronized phase. So when it starts, it begins copying all the existing data plus new writes. And as it goes, once it has finished its backlog of uh, things it needs to copy, it enters a synchronized state where it just mirrors new writes from then forward. Um, for performance information, uh, it doesn't actually copy the, uh, the existing writes at the same time as new ones are copying. It's uh, interleaved in one loop. Uh, so uh, it's, it's not necessarily running in a, in a multi-threaded way in that sense, but it is doing both at the same time in the same queue. Um, it can run indefinitely upon reaching parity. So once it has finished copying all the backlog, the job is not going to complete like the others. It's just going to continue running uh, forever and ever until you tell it to stop. Um, and again, same, same usual talks uh, for more <laughs> explicit information on how that works. Um, but essentially, you'd have something like a, a device model that is backed by a QCOW2 chain. And if you wanted to do like a full sync of uh, exactly the data as the guests see it, you'd use sync full. Um, you would begin writing uh, the existing information from the top layer to the copy. And at the same time, as new writes come in, those are also queued up for both uh, layers. The graph is a little misleading. It's not actually uh, writing the data twice and copying simultaneously. but Effectively, that's what ha is happening from the old chain to the new while new writes come in at the same time. Um, once we've reached parity, uh, it stops copying uh, the old information, and it's just writing uh, twice from then on. And it will stay in this state until you tell it to complete manually. Um, and upon completion, uh, QMU will actually pivot to using the, the new information instead of the old information. And the old chain will be. Uh, uh, removed from Kimi's, uh active uh, graph list. Um, block backup, uh, very similar to Mirror. Um, it's, it uses the same modes as Mirror. You can use full, top, none. Um, but it doesn't have a synchronous phase. Once it completes, it's done. It's finished. Um, it doesn't pivot to the backup like Mirror does. 
Um, and as a, a point that Eric always likes to point out, it has a different point in time for the snapshot as, uh, as mirror does, where mirror, uh, the point in time of the copy you get with mirror is when you complete the job. But with uh, backup, the point in time is going to be at the job start, uh, which means that performance-wise, it behaves a little bit differently in that new writes are not copied over to the new uh, destination as you're going. So uh, when a write comes in, uh, Kimu actually has to halt that write, uh, write the data out quickly before it finishes, and then resume uh, doing what it was. So uh, possible performance uh, uh, hit there. But um, there is a, a fourth uh, backup mode for this one, uh, incremental backups, which I covered in uh, maybe too much detail last year. And you can go check that out if you wanted to see how that one worked. Um, but here's just a, a very simple case, again, of how this one's going to work. Um, as writes come in, we're going to uh, copy from, from top to backup. And uh, new writes are going to come into top, but we're not going to copy them also over to the backup as we go. So that's the, the main difference between mirror. Uh, and there's no uh, pivot at the end. Um, so I'm going to. <laughs> cover some of the, uh, the QMP interfaces for creating and managing jobs as they exist right now. Um, so they are managed entirely by QMP. Um, and if you want to check out the uh, event uh, notification uh, spec, we do have documentation on that. So you can get a more complete view of that. Um, so this is the workflow for a job. Uh, Every job that is uh, created via the QMP interface will immediately enter the running or uh, busy state. Uh, there's no explicit start command at the moment. Um, so once the job is running, you can pause or resume it, which is on the lower left there. Um, a busy job may become ready in the case of, for instance, a uh, block mirror that needs to uh, announce to you that it is in the uh, synchronous phase. Um, and then a busy or a ready job uh, may enter either the canceled or completed phases through uh, a manual cancellation. Uh, or uh, if the job finishes successfully, it will enter the completed state. And then uh, after that happens unceremoniously, the object is uh, deleted with no further uh, interference from the user. So uh, there is no. Uh, central block job create command. All of the jobs are created through their own front end commands. So we have explicit top level commands for uh, uh, commit, stream, backup, and mirror. Um, the jobs are started automatically, as I said. And uh, historically, uh, the job ID has been that of the, the related device that we were interfacing with in the block layer. And there was no explicit ID given. But that's some of uh, uh, what Alberto has been changing recently. Um, so you can actually now give it an ID, but uh, some of the uh, other commands don't uh, know what to do with the ID just yet. But it's something we're working on changing. Um, so just a quick example of creation. Uh, you would give a command, for instance, drive backup. Like I said, there's no unified uh, job create command. And you will get a return that tells you almost precisely nothing. But afterwards, there will be a job that you can query. So. Um, I'll talk about events really briefly. Um, <laughs> block job canceled. Yes, there's two L's. That's fine in Canada, maybe not America. Who knows? But yes, it is two L's in case you try to use this slide to implement something and you yell at me when you fix the typo. Uh, <laughs> so it goes. Um, so block job canceled, fairly self-explanatory. If the user cancels the job, you get that event. Uh, block job completed, which is not indicative of actual success. The event will tell you if there was an error or not. Completed is uh, also delivered when you get an error. Uh, block job error only comes when you get an error. And block job ready is the event that you will receive, for instance, for mirror when it has reached the synchronous phase. Uh, here's an example of the uh, of the query. It tells you a few interesting things, uh, but not that interesting. It's OK. Um, for pausing, if you need to pause back and forth, uh, you can just see that the busy state has changed to false and pause to true. Fairly self-explanatory. Resuming, opposite effect, not, uh, not too spooky. 
Uh, when jobs complete, like I said, they can either complete successfully, they can error out, or they can be canceled. Uh, in this case, this is a successful completion notice. There's an absence of an error field, and you get the block job uh, uh, completed event. Uh, for the error case, you can see that we actually do get two full events. You get the block job error event, so you know something has gone terribly wrong. And the block job completed event, though you may be hoping that that's telling you your job is completed successfully, we have an error field this time letting us know that uh, things did not go according to plan. And in the last case, uh, when the job is canceled, yeah, you get a fairly self-explanatory uh, uh, canceled event. Um, the mirror job, for instance, uh, has the ability to complete slightly differently. It's going to announce to you with the ready command, or the ready event, excuse me. Um, and when you uh, want to complete the job, when you're done, you don't want it to start, uh, you want it to stop mirroring the writes from here on out. You can uh, give it the uh, complete command, and you will get a return there. Um, and after that return, you will also receive the other standard events uh, for completion. Um, so uh, I would like to talk a little bit about some of the uh, problems. Uh, they're not really problems, but some of the feature uh, uh, deficits, I guess, with uh, jobs as they exist now. Um, so jobs as we have them right now were implemented as uh, block-specific primitives. Um, so a lot of the code is very block-centric. It is tied fairly heavily into the block layer. Um, all of the QMP commands are named after the block layer. Um, the, historically, they don't have unique IDs because device was good enough. You'd, you'd tell the job what device uh, you wanted it to run on, and that was enough to address it from there on out. Um, which is becoming a bit of a problem as we restructure the block layer and the device identifier is becoming an increasingly outdated paradigm. Um, so uh, on the subject of identification, uh, block jobs are currently managed by device uh, ID, which is uh, becoming not true, thanks to Alberto, but uh, some of the commands like uh, query, pause, resume, etc., Still expect a device name instead of the job ID, though it. No? Did we change that? Uh, I think it's, we just used the device name as an alias for the ID. So. As a, oh, okay. As a value for ID, is how we're doing it now. But it's still the, the event names are still all using like the device field instead of a job ID. And, it, and if you don't provide one, instead it's still falling back to the device ID, yes. Uh, I think we essentially used the device field as the job ID. So we keep the field name, but we, it doesn't have a device yeah. name anymore. It's just ID. Okay. But uh, one of the problems with the way that the API was written is that the jobs are going to want to interact with more than one node or device uh, to begin with anyway. So uh, either naming it device or relying on a device field is going to tie us kind of unfairly or heavy-handedly to one area more than the other. Um, but for instance, mirror and backup have two complete trees, and we're going to need to associate a job properly with multiple uh, things to begin with. Um, so for instance, when a job pivots on their focal device, it kind of changed the association that the management layer may have thought it had, and you are kind of uh, stuck uh, referencing it the same way as when it was created. Uh, so it's a little iffy there. Um, the jobs layer itself uh, opens blockers on the one uh, node that it begins on, and it later can open blockers on the other. But uh, you can get yourself into problems where um, if it doesn't open the correct permissions on the second node because it's primarily associated with one, uh, you can open other operations that uh, can lead to uh, like an a incoherent state, I suppose, with uh, some of the trees. Um, you're only allowed uh, one job per device at the moment, kind of. Uh, the blockers we have right now are very restrictive. Um, so jobs are very heavy-handed, and they like to claim almost exclusive control of the device they're working on. Um, and in part, uh, we would really like to open this up for multiple job support uh, so that you can be able to read from multiple nodes that may have shared uh, common nodes in the graph. Um, so uh, to enable uh, much more uh, concurrent throughput, we would like to be able to uh, do uh, multiple jobs. Um, 
So again, at the moment, the jobs kind of take more locks than they need, and in other cases, they don't take quite as many as they should. We want to increase the parallelism. Um, there's nothing strictly that's preventing us from reading from multiple places in the, in the graph uh, at the moment, other than we haven't done it yet. Um, so the new op blockers will help in part uh, with a more fine-grained control system. Um, but if we refactor the uh, QAPI at the same time, we can get a new jobs interface uh, that should be a little easier to use and allow better management across uh, multiple uh, graphs. Um, and I would like to talk a little bit um, about uh, coroutines. Uh, so jobs are implemented using a chemi primitive known as uh, our coroutine layer. Um, and it's a really powerful uh, interface for uh, managing these uh, tasks at the uh, management layer, but at the moment it's only for the block layer. Um, so it would be nice if we could add multi-jobs, multi but while we're at it, uh, as we change the interface a little uh, bit, we can bring this abstraction to the rest of QEMU for other subsystems to use so that they can have this nice asynchronous uh, runtime system that's already fairly well understood in kind of the, the rest of the system. Um, and if you would like to know more about how coroutines are implemented themselves, uh, Jeff Cody has a talk tomorrow that's going to go a uh, bit more detail about how those work um, kind of on the lower end, uh, and that should be good. Uh, <laughs> so as mentioned, uh, we, we need a bit of a new API, or at least an API rework to be able to do multi-jobs. So let's bring coroutines to the rest of QEMU. Um, it's, a, it's a good abstraction for tasks, or I should say that a, and a, a generic jobs interface would be a better abstraction than the current block-specific one we have. Uh, something would be uh, simple to manage and query for uh, all of QEMU. Um, and it's already very well understood because it's in use by libvirt. Um, so just simply, I'm going to chop off the block prefix to all of these commands. Um, so it's going to have a similar uh, uh, workflow as jobs already do. Uh, so we'll have the same cancel, pause, resume, complete, query. Um, the only change that might be slightly interesting is where we have a very specific set speed command right now. We want to replace with a generic set option so that different subsystems and different jobs can have a more generic uh, option setting interface for the rest of it. Um, set speed uh, may be useful for others, but it's hard to predict uh, in the future if we open up coroutines to the rest of QEMU what they will want, so we can have a slightly more generic uh, edit primitive uh, for commands on that. Um, similarly, for events, uh, just chop the, uh, the block prefix off. Um, I did want to talk about uh, a started event. Um, at the moment, events start automatically, but there are a few cases where it may be a problem that jobs start immediately. And I would like to add the ability to manually start a job after creation. Uh, where this can come up is in transactional uh, phases, where you want to queue up, for instance, five different jobs, but you want to make sure that they're all going to work uh, the way you want before you start any of them. But uh, the way jobs work now is they begin running as soon as you issue the command, and then they yield, uh, which can get you into slightly uh, out, of, out of sync states if uh, some of the jobs finish before the others are even queued up to start. So uh, a manual job start phase might be something we need, but we might be able to skirt the issue. But depending on how useful it is to the upper management layers, we can look at this. Um, but even though I want to rename everything, uh, the legacy interface, of course, needs to stay put. So we have uh, older libvirt and et cetera that can still use it. Um, but if you try to use the new API, the old API should return an error immediately so that there's no mixed usage. Uh, this should allow us to give a fairly clean uh, ability to support the old interface while kind of having a bit of a compatibility break with the new system. Um, Block jobs in particular would become kind of a subclass of the job system, and we could keep all of the existing QMP interface for that. It should work exactly as it does now. Uh, but if you want uh, uh, enhanced features, you can just migrate to the new uh, API. Um, so block jobs are now a subsystem. We Each subsystem can have the capacity to expand 
query or set options so that a management layer can get more information and set more options at that level if they need to. Um, and the basic premise here is that other subsystems may wish to use coroutines. Um, and I don't know if Juan is here, and that maybe that's good for me, but uh, migration is an obvious target, perhaps, for uh, moving to a job uh, coroutine uh, model of doing things. Um, it would take a lot of work, but it's something that would obviously uh, lend itself well to this kind of a workflow. But there may be other systems and features in the work that in the works that could uh, take advantage of this kind of a workflow. I know I have seen patches in the past two years that have, uh, they add their own events that are similar, you know, oh, start and cancel error. And uh, it looks like the same type of job pattern that pops up again and again as people propose new QMP commands, new QMP events. Um, so even though I don't have a strong lineup of things that would uh, be subject to conversion as I change this API, I think it's something that could get a lot of uh, playtime in the future. Um, so with that in mind, I wanted to uh, extend an invitation uh, to any upper uh, layer developers uh, here now to uh, reach out to me and uh, tell me what you would like in a new jobs management system. Um, there are some features I think we have room to add that could be useful, but I don't always have the full picture. Um, one of the things, uh, I think about sometimes is adding a uh, like a process management type of view uh, that could span a couple of the subsystems uh, so you could see what's taking uh, IO uh, what's using up the IO CPU memory etc and I think uh, an expanded job system could lend itself well to that sort of a thing uh, for for querying by upper layer debug or investigative tools but um, I am at the end, so if anybody has questions or requests, I think we have a few minutes, so you can yell at me if you would like. Yeah. How um, tied are the, uh, the block job concept to coroutines? So I think about the migration example. Mm -hmm. Migration already uses a, a full OS thread. So I, I'm not sure what the compelling mm -hmm. reason to use coroutines there is. Particularly with uh, post copy, we might actually end up having multiple threads right. okay, running fair. with migration. So I'm just wondering how. Um, how that was so meant. at the moment, jobs are fairly well tied to coroutines. It's basically their their reason to exist as a front end to that. So if if migration has strong reasons that it can't, maybe it's a non-starter. But uh, we I'm, I'm not committed to converting migration. It was uh, it's a thought that's come up a few times, but. I have not personally sure. delved deeply into that. And just on the, on the um, you, you mentioned the possibility of a started event that could that could fit in with migration, um, because when you, you you trigger the the start of the migration, you have the the connection phase where you have to establish the TCP connection, and that may or may not succeed. Right, and right. And then logically, the the job starts once you've got the right, stuff right. Connected yeah, up. it's 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 really the workflow from the user management perspective is the most similar thing, and maybe the back end isn't going to work out, but. Uh, perhaps there's something that we can do to uh, help uh, unify the events a little bit, perhaps. But we can look. I think that there is quite natural candidate for new transaction. Uh, we could think about save VM and load VM, which is a bit forgotten. Oh, as as a as a new job. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's a, a couple of new jobs that we'd like to add, but. Um, I think that because could VM be one. and load VM right now even doesn't have a QMP interface, so it's pretty good candidate uh, without any compatibility layer. But you need, uh, I think, for say VM and load VM, you want kind of that uh, point in time snapshot functionality for more than just the block layer, right? Like you memory yes. block everything, full state. Okay, yeah, but that's another thing that lends itself to this kind of a workflow. And one additional point. Uh, all this stuff uh, is quite good. We are moving to new interfaces. But I think uh, that there, are, there is a lot of homework which should be done to allow uh, block jobs works better. Because right now, I do know that we are slow, unreliable, waste disk space, and could not finish uh, in reasonable amount of time if they have to, if they have asked uh, this block job to finish. 
Yeah. Um, so I was trying to look more at the uh, the interface of it, but if uh, we need to improve the block jobs themselves, I mean, I'm more than amenable to making sure that happens, of course. Uh, one one recent thing that I've noticed uh, is we're beginning to use block jobs internally in QEMU. So the colo block replication code oh, is yeah. actually launching block jobs, but not through QMP, ah. uh, but internally. Uh, the weird thing about that is those block jobs still go through the full life cycle, and they still raise events. So oh, although the management yeah. tool may not be aware there's a block job, there is one running inside QEMU, and suddenly it starts getting events about random block jobs. It didn't start itself. Sure. And so I think this is a new use case. And since you're reworking the job subsystem anyway, I think we should consider that. And maybe some jobs are internal, and the consumers of their events shouldn't be the, the monitor and shouldn't be QMP. It but should be the internal as a callback or Yeah, that would be really some useful. Such. Yeah. Well, you might actually end up having nested jobs. If the, <laughs> if the management app launches a job, and that job internally spawns another yeah. number of other yeah. jobs its own usage. Yes, that would be crazy. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're a pinch over time. Are you okay? Thank you. Oh, it's safe. <laughs>